and welcome to this week's preview show here at Vitality Stadium. Neil Parrott joins me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at last week's 2-2 draw with West Ham United. We'll also be joined by under-21s keeper Will Dennis, who will be previewing tomorrow's Premier League Cup game. And finally, we'll look ahead to Sunday's game at the Emirates, where the Cherries take on Arsenal. But first, let's start back at last weekend and that 2-2 draw with West Ham. Here are all the goals. Chipped cross towards the back post, brought down by Aller. And Yarmolenko finds room for the shot and curls one past Aaron Ramsdale. Just too easy for West Ham. They have the lead inside the opening 10 minutes. Brilliantly brought down by Sebastian Aller. And an even better finish from Yarmolenko curling past Aaron Ramsdale. Bournemouth trailing by a goal to nil at home to West Ham. Taken short to King, then back out to Rico. He'll deliver the ball in towards the box. It's over the head of Billy. It drops to Joshua King, who side puts it past Fabianski. Offside. And the flag is up away to our right for offside. And now referee Stuart Atwell has got his finger to his ear. He's pointing. He's oh. given the goal. Equaliser to Bournemouth. Joshua King. live Premier League commentary on BBC Radio 7. Great one by Dominic Solanke, lays it off to Joshua King. Back to Callum Wilson! Seven goals in seven games against West Ham for Wilson. And he scores in a fourth consecutive Premier League match for the very first time. And Bournemouth have the lead for the first time in this match. The Cherries are 2-1 up against the Hammers. Talk about coming out the blocks, flying. Absolutely fantastic start. What a finish it was. Rico's going to deliver the corner on the far side. Curling, left-footed towards Billing. And Ake! Nathan Ake puts Bournemouth 3-1 up against the Hammers. Did it take a deflection on its way through? Did it come off of a Bournemouth player? I think Were they interfering? The offside. Yarmolenko turns infield. Didn't cross on his left foot again to Felipe Anderson at the back post. Not it down to Cresswell! Aaron Cresswell equalises for the Hammers, unmarked, headed down by Felipe Anderson. Cresswell, two goals in two games for him. Well, a very eventful 2-2 draw there. Neil, we were up there in the press box, we saw it ourselves. 1-0 down, then 2-1 up. What did you make of the game? I think you just you just summed it all up. Eventful is what a word just to describe that game. I mean, for the neutral, it must have been an absolutely fantastic game to watch. Some, some really good goals, some really good play, lots of lots of talking points, lots of incidents, lots of VAR. If you like VAR, not many people do. Um, but yeah, no, it was. Uh, you could just about say it was probably a, a fair result. Um, we're probably just about kicking ourselves a little bit harder that we that we didn't win it. And you know they're, they're always eventful against West Ham, aren't they? And, and you know you say with the VAR last week, it gave a goal for us, it denied us a goal. What was your take on it? Well, I'm not a fan of VAR, I have to say. Um, it's completely put me off watching Match of the Day because it just seems to be that every game now is, is VAR dominated. We saw it again on Monday night between Manchester United and Arsenal. But like you said, at least we had one going our way with the, with the Josh King goal. A really tough decision for a linesman to, to make and it's sort of hanging the officials out to dry, if you like, on a weekly basis. And then, of course, the goal from, from Nathan Aki. Well, you know, before this season, that will stand all day long and Josh's will obviously be ruled out all day long. So, yes, you can argue that, that they're getting these things right. Um, but, you know, it's just taking so long. And when you think that um, rugby and cricket seem to have got it spot on with the way that they're using the technology these days, you know, the manager's already said that there's going to be some teething problems. And I think we're still having a lot of teething problems with VAR. And another thing that, that VAR checked last week was a potential penalty on Joshua King. What was your thoughts on that? Did you think it was a, a penalty? Well, I think if we were having a vote for the most unlucky uh, Bournemouth player at the moment, it would be Josh King. He's had uh, a, a penalty which he didn't get given at Southampton. He's got another one which looked like a penalty last week against West Ham. He's got a goal disallowed at Southampton. I think he's really unlucky, but, you know, hopefully the worms turn last week and he gets that goal given. So I, th I think, um, you know, that... 
Josh, Josh's luck is going to come with him and I think we could see a few goals from him soon. Absolutely, he's, he's doing brilliantly out on the wing and, and up front Callum Wilson, he scored in his fourth game in a row for, for the first ever time and, and that's quite something, isn't it? Certainly is. I mean, um, I was lucky enough to speak to Callum in the lead up to the game and he mentioned that he'd never scored in uh, four consecutive Premier League games. You, you never know whether a player's jinxing themselves by mentioning that or bringing it up. Um, but it was great to see him get that goal, and he's got this incredible knack. I mean, in that seven goals in seven games against West Ham, um, his was probably the big chance which you know could have won the game for us. He went through, keepers made a fantastic save, and then not long after West Ham have got the equaliser. But like I said, uh, you know, on the balance of play, possibly just about a fair result. And eleven points now—that's a healthy place to be after seven games, isn't it? Well, it's a fantastic start when you think that. Um, you know, I think it was three, three or four games, you know, the, the points tally wasn't as, as good as everyone had hoped. But, uh, you know, it just shows you what back-to-back wins can do in the Premier League. It shoots you right up there, you know. And, um, yeah, you know, we were almost equaling last, last season's record start. You know, if we can get a couple of results in the next few games, then, you know, we'll, we'll be there and if not even ahead of it. Absolutely. And, and, you know, 11 points on the board now and unbeaten in September. Eddie Howe's nominated for the Premier League's Manager of the Month. It's not been a bad few weeks, has it? No, it's like I said, you know, there was a couple of sticky results, you know, when we came away from Leicester. Um, you know, obviously everybody's thinking, oh, you know, can they, can they sort of turn this around? And, you know, like the Premier League shows you just straight away, like I said, a couple of wins and a draw, seven points from three games, you know, manager of the month nomination, Callum Wilson scoring goals in every game. You know, let, let's just hope that the run continues into into October. And a word on Callum Wilson there, another call up for him. It, it wasn't it wasn't a surprise, was it? No, I mean, if you're Gareth Southgate, you can't ignore someone who's scoring goals in the Premier League on a weekly basis. He's done he's done fantastically well. You know, he's had other chances as well. Callum will probably think that he could have had more goals th- than he's actually had in September. But you know, he's going to go into the international break full of confidence. You know, and hopefully we can see him pull on the England shirt and, and do the same for them. Absolutely. Well, next up, our attention turns to tomorrow's Premier League Cup game against Nottingham Forest here at Vitality Stadium. Our under-21s had quite the outing last time they played here. But it reaches Hamilton on the edge of the box. It's a good challenge there. And a shot by Kilkenny! It's into the bottom corner! A really good strike from the young Irishman. 1-0 here on AFCB TV. It's Gavin Kilkenny does well to win that ball back. And he can drive forward now, Kilkenny. Good opportunity here. Looks to chip the goalkeeper from distance. And it's in! What a goal by Gavin Kilkenny! An unbelievable strike from the young Irishman. To his right, plenty of options in field. One of those is Alex Dobray. Dobray to Hamilton. Oh, it's a great knock. Scrimshaw shot! Off the post, he'll get another go! It's in! Really good finish from Jake Scrimshaw. Captain Dean Stone, Reuben Collins were both sent off in that one as Lloyd Kelly drives forward now for the Cherries. Kelly to Jade and Anthony. Lloyd Kelly with a chance to cross. It's a low on Scrimshaw's there! Cool as you like. A great cross from Lloyd Kelly and Scrimshaw did the rest. Hamilton's away here. Checks in field. Anthony. Pace the attack and Anthony goes a goal! What a strike! Well, the goals have been of a high standard tonight, but that's up there with them. What a finish! Finesse into the top corner. Combine here as Anthony drives forward. It's got Kelly on the outside, finds him. Kelly cuts it back to kill Kenny on a hat trick. Drills one low, it's in! It might have taken a nick on the way through, but I'm sure Gavin Kilkenny will claim that. Will Dennis now looks to get an attack going from the back. Dennis finds Kilkenny. Charlie, obviously Gavin scored a hat-trick. He's not really known for scoring many goals, but just tell us how he's been working on that side of his game. Yeah, like I said earlier, he's always working hard. He's always in the gym, you know, working on his finishing and working on his working on his game. He's been with the first team, obviously. Um, that's probably improved him in a sense, you know what I mean? He's, he's training a lot. I'll just interrupt you here as Lloyd Kelly drives on a goal! What a finish! Back from injury, and he's on the score sheet. Lloyd Kelly, brilliant drill shot. Low into the bottom corner. Hamilton drops the shoulder and drinks his side. He's got Anthony in front of him if he can find him. And he has found him. Anthony 
Beats one, looks to chip the goalkeeper. Oh, it's in! Jaden Anthony, just like Gavin Kilkenny, has lobbed the goalkeeper and found the net. Well, some fantastic goals last time our under-21s played here at Vitality Stadium. Now then, as you can see, we are delighted to be joined by under-21s goalkeeper Will Dennis. Will, thank you for joining us. How much are you looking forward to, to being here tomorrow at Vitality Stadium? Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a good day tomorrow, hopefully a nice little crowd out there. It'll be a good experience on the stadium pitch with everyone. And for you, you know, playing against teams like Nottingham Forest, they're a higher category. How much of a, a good test is that for you guys? Yeah, it'll be a good team. They'll put a strong team out there will be because um, it's a Premier League Cup and everyone wants to perform in that so they'll show us what they've got and I'm sure we'll give back what we need to give. Well you played here a couple of weeks ago in the Hampshire Senior Cup against Basingstoke you did your bit by keeping a clean sheet and you saw some fantastic goals at the other end. Yeah well, it was great some great team goals some great individual goals obviously seen Gav's goal completely different 40 yards out wherever it was on the pitch and then you got the team goal that starts from the back and we can well we've shown that we can do whatever goal we can to get where we need to get. Without patronising you, Will, what's it like for a young player coming through to, to play on the first team ground, which is a Premier League ground? Um, obviously, it's a big experience. So You see the first team players out here on a Saturday or a Sunday, and it's like, oh yeah, we want to be out there. But then as soon as you're out there, it's like, oh, what a feeling, I want to keep going, it doesn't want to end. But yeah, it's a good feeling to be out there. And for you, Will, you know, you've, you've trained with the first team. What's it like, you know, training with players like, you know, senior senior internationals that have played, you know, like Artur Boric previously, Asmir Begovic, and, you know, you've got the likes of Mark Travers and Aaron Ramsdale in there too. It's a talented bunch, isn't it? Yeah, well, we've got a good, good bunch of goalkeepers. You've got, obviously, Artur and Asmir who have been in the leagues for quite a long time and they're doing really well. And obviously got the young ones coming up, like Mark and Ramsdale who have done really well as well. Obviously, they're proving themselves and it just shows that you've got a manager that will trust the youngsters coming up, it's good. And when you when you see you know Mark Travers and Aaron Ramsdale playing for the first team here at Vitality Stadium and around the country, how much does that inspire you You know to, to be in that position in perhaps a few years' time? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great feeling to see them out there, but I'm sure one day I'll be out there and it'll be one of the best feelings of my life, really. I'm definitely going to achieve it one day. So I'm gonna... Will, uh, big se every season's a big season for every player, but more so for you because you missed out quite a lot of last season. Just tell us what happened. Uh, I had a little back injury. I was out for about six months, six and a half months, and it was a long time out, but we got back quite, quite quickly for what it was, really. Lots of pros and cons uh, being a professional footballer, particularly here with such a young team of goalkeepers. But in the last six months, we've seen two young goalkeepers both playing in the Premier League, so that must give you some real encouragement. Yeah, I mean... We've, we've seen it, they're unbelievable and everything, so it just pushes you. It's just competition at the end of the day, like you try and beat them, they try and beat you. You're just trying to be the better out of all of them. But it's great to see two lads coming through from the academy or from what they've come from. It's great to see the manager trust youngsters as well. And we had Neil Moss on, on the show a couple of weeks ago and he was very complimentary about yourself. What's it like, you know, to, to train under him? Oh, no, it's a pleasure. He's a very good goalkeeper coach. and Obviously, we've got Anthony White working alongside him, so we've got a very good goalkeeper group. We've got Gaz and Joe in the under-18s and 21, so we've got a very good group here. And just finally, Premier League Cup, first, first game in the Premier League Cup tomorrow. What are your ambitions for the season, not just in this competition, but across the next six, seven months? Uh, I think just game time for me personally, but obviously for a team, I think we just want to try and get as far as we can in all competitions and just try and improve every week in, in training and in games. It will hopefully come on the pitch. Well, Will, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure we speak on behalf of every Bournemouth fan and saying best of luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Now then, on Sunday, our first team are playing away at Arsenal and that is where our attention turns to next. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. I think with Callum, we've just been focusing on his performances and making sure that he delivers uh, what we need for the team. And then on the back of that, we've always said we feel he score goals if... He gets the um, the finer points of his performance right. I think he has, and now I think he's in confident mood, and um, that's a great sign for us and for him. The the group has been um, in a positive frame of mind. We've trained well, uh, naturally. I think from the the runner games that we've had, I think the boys are believing in themselves, believing in the team, believing how we work. I think we're in a good place. Um, but as we've known from Premier League. Uh, history, you know, our experiences, it can change quickly. So we have to be very level and very focused on performing in our next game. What we have to do from our previous visits to the Emirates is start better. I think we've conceded early goals, um, which have made the games even harder for us. So if we can learn from those 
those previous games and start stronger, show a better resolve early in the game. We'll give ourselves a chance, but we've got to perform. In this game, we've got to perform at our maximum levels to get something. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Neil, it's, it's Arsenal next up. They had a 1-1 draw with Man United on Monday and, and they've looked OK, haven't they? Yeah, and they had a resounding 4-0 home win last night in the Europa League. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, um, it's been a good start for Arsenal. It just shows you how good that the Manchester City and Liverpool are that, you know, Arsenal are already nine points behind Liverpool and we've only played seven games. Just shows you how difficult it is to, to catch those, to match those two teams and to catch those two teams. So, um, yeah, no, they're, they're in some good form. It was a good good point at, at Old Trafford. I know that everybody's criticising the strength and what have you of the Manchester United team, but, you know, let's be honest, it's still a very daunting venue to go to, to, to pick up anything. You know, not many teams are going to pick, pick up um, points at, at Old Trafford this season and Arsenal have done that. You know, and they're in, they're in there, but I think they'll be looking to regain their Champions League place. I think, um, you know, maybe the title is already beyond them, even after you know seven games. Well, you mentioned that that Man United draw, and just before before that, let's not forget they beat Villa three two at home, but they were down to ten men for most of the game, so they can really, you know, get a result when they need to, can't they? Well, that was a real ding dong affair, wasn't it? Um, I think um, was it Villa took the lead twice, and you're thinking, well, this is going to be one of the shocks of the season, and here we are, we're only into September. But it just shows you, you know, these these teams like Arsenal, when they when they needed to, they really dug deep there. They pulled a result out where everybody had probably written them off with, you know, 20, 25 minutes to go in the second half. So it just shows you what you're up against when you go to the Emirates. And, you know, a 4-0 win just yesterday in, in the Europa League, will they take confidence from that? Or do you think they'll be a little bit fatigued going into Sunday's game? Because it's only a, a two, three day turnaround. I think it's all... Obviously, all dependent on on the personnel. I mean, um, Unai Emery would have, you know, changed his team quite a lot for the standard Liège game, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll see a lot more faces who played against Manchester United on Monday will will be playing us, and we all know that that is a formidable Arsenal lineup. So we are going to have to be on our metal to get anything out of the game. Well, you mentioned, uh, you know, Arsenal's key players. They've got Pierre and Aubameyang, who's been in, in fine form this season. Absolutely le- lethal player scored against us. You know, at the Emirates last season, um, really, he's their danger man. No question, he's their danger man. He's, we're really going to have to keep tabs on him. But the problem is, if you you can't just single out one person in the, in the Arsenal team to keep tabs on, you know, they've got they've got dangerous players all over the pitch. So, like I said, we you know really we're really going to have to be on our game. But you know, we've got some dangerous players as well. So you know who. We, we, we can certainly go there. There's no reason why we can't come back with something. We've got dangerous players, as you say. We've also got players coming back from injury as well. So that's a, a real bonus. You know, the last few weeks we've been talking about all these players that are coming back and, you know, we've had no fresh concerns ahead of the game. Well, and those players have now got, you know, game time and a lot more training under their belt. So, you know, that's going to be really refreshing for the manager to look around his, his, his changing room and look at his team lineup and who he's going to, who he's going to, cho- who he's going to choose. You know, and a strong bench, I've said in the past, you know, the manager looks around and he sees that he's got, you know, real quality on the bench. You know, that can ch- change games for you. And that's going, to be, that's going to be a great bonus going into the game. And the likes of Jack Stacey, Diego Rico, they're getting more and more game time and, you know, they're looking better and better, aren't they? Diego just won our, our Player of the Month for September as well. I think, I think one thing that really struck me about him winning that it just shows how knowledgeable um, the Bournemouth supporters are. You know, it's easy, to, it's easy to give a player of the match or a player of the month to, to a goal scorer. You know, everybody loves a goal scorer, but, you know, he's a left back and they've seen how well he's done. You know, he's pro- provided assists in these games. He's been really solid. He's benefiting from having a run of games. He's had, you know, two or three games on the bounce, which he probably hasn't had, you know, before. Um, doing really, really well. And Jack Stacey, look at him against West Ham. You know, all of a sudden we're looking at, you know, a real contender to, to Simon Francis's crown as the, the club's right back. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a very exciting game at the Emirates Stadium on Sunday. If you want to have a go at predicting the score, you can head to cherrieschampions.com and this week you could win a signed AFC Bournemouth shirt. That's all we've got time for today. If you are going up to Arsenal on Sunday, then have a safe journey. But if not, keep an eye on all our social media channels for the latest updates. Bye for now.